Well, hi, welcome to my latest video. On this one, I'm going to review a product that I was sent from a company called Wavelink. Now, I've reviewed their products in the past. I think the last one I did was a 10 gig network adapter for your PCIe port on your PC. And it did extremely well. I'm still using one today on one of my PCs, and I have no complaints. Anyway, this is a mesh wireless system. In reality, as I looked through the online manual, I found out that each one of them is like its own router. Now, how strong is their firewall capabilities? I'm not 100% sure of. I'm not going to be testing that as part of this video. If I were to use this, I would still put a firewall between it and your internet connection. But that's me, okay? So, this one supports both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz wireless networking. At the 2.4 gigahertz, it actually has the ability to go with frequencies up to 570 plus megabits per second. At the 5 gigahertz frequency range, it's like 2.4 gigabits per second. They can handle up to 256 devices. And just to show you how the multiple units in a mesh environment work, if you had only one unit, which you can buy it in a one unit configuration, then you'll get 2,500 square feet range for your wireless. If you put two units, like I have in this unit pack they sent me, then depending on how you space them, as long as you space them properly, then you can get up to 5,000 square feet of wireless capability at the highest speeds. If you go for three, that's 7,300 square feet. And I understand from the online manual, you'll see a link down below uh, in the notes of this video showing how to get to it. It can handle up to 10 of these devices all meshed together. There's a primary one and then up to nine satellites. And you can really get a wide range with that as you could imagine, okay? Now, these can be controlled fully by a mobile app. Or you could connect a PC to one of the local connections, RJ45 connections that these devices each have. And then you could manage it from like a laptop, for example, with a direct connection to it. Up to you. It also has this concept of touch link. The touch link basically means at the top of each one of these, you simply touch it. It starts blinking, and then you can connect up to a specific a wireless Wi-Fi connection that now will appear on your device. And then once you connect it to it, then it will stop blinking. It has now done a one-touch quick connect to that device. You won't have to type in passwords and anything else to it if you, if you want to you know, have a visitor or something that you need to get online quickly. It also can be connected to other mesh networks and, and routers as well, as long as they're Wavelink, okay? Or, you know, compatible with Wavelink, I would assume, right? It also features beamforming 2 by 2 Mu MIMO OFDMA for efficiency and TWT for what they call power savings. Now, those are more advanced concepts. I'm not going to get into those in any detail on this particular video, but it's something that you might find interesting for your particular application. It also has a built-in VPN, but in this short video, I'm not going to be able to show you how that's set up. It's pretty standard. It comes right off the menu system when you log into the devices themselves. So with that, I'm going to next open this up. We'll see what comes in the box. And we know that there's two units, but we'll also see what accessories it comes with. Okay? So let's get going. Okay, here we go. This is the box that it came with. I already took the shrink wrapping off because that causes reflections into the cameras. <laughs> but let me open this up and see what comes in here. Okay. Looks like some paperwork at the top here. I recognize these things. That's the warranty and safety cards, right? Those are pretty standard, right? In terms of what they include. I won't go into that. Uh, this looks like... Uh, Oh, a little thing, like I mentioned before, that I thought would be in here. It's like a quick start. Gives you some basic idea of what's included and some initial steps. But if you want to get the full detail, you click on that QR code. Or you type in this URL that's over here, which I've already done in the notes down below, as I mentioned earlier in this video. So we'll look at that instead. And then what is this? Position guide. Oh, it shows you how to position the mesh units. That probably doesn't show on the camera too well, but it looks pretty handy. It looks like it'll give you ideas of what you should do in setting them up in terms of distance from each other. So we'll save that. And what do we got here? I'll take this box out first if I can get it. There we go. 
out. A oh, nice color blue, blue green. I'm going to empty this out. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. So what do we have here? We have two power adapters that it comes with. These are barrel connectors. I'll try to look it up and display on the screen here how much uh, voltage and current capability these are showing because I can't really read it the way it is right now. So it's two of those. I'm sure they're the same. One for each unit. And then they give you two uh, Ethernet cables. And do the fold over. Looks like about 18 inches. So together that's like three foot from end to end is my guess. Okay. Put that aside. And then let's see what we got in here. We've got a tray, plastic tray. Be careful not to drop. I'm trying to be careful not to drop anything. And then there's two units. Let's take them up. Looks like they got a peel off the top. So we'll probably do that later. So this has here, just like any router, from what I read online, it seems to function just like any router you would buy. Again, as I mentioned, I'm not 100% sure what the security level of this is. So, you know, just be aware of that. It has a power on switch. It has the barrel connector receiver, has a, uh, what, is, what is that? I guess that's a pairing button, yeah. There's a reset, you got a little thing here you got to stick a pin into, but then there's a pairing button. And what I read online, you have two of these, you press both buttons on both of them. Let's see, they're exactly the same? Hey, they are. So here's the two units. They each have a WAN connection, and they each have two local connections. Let's see, what's the speed on that? It just says LAN 1 and LAN 2. Doesn't tell me what the speeds are. I assume it's one gig. That's pretty standard these days, right? They each have their power connectors, power buttons, some basic information on the bottom here, serial numbers and so forth. They're exactly the same. That's what they look like to me. So what you're gonna have to do when we set this up in a minute, we're gonna have to pick one of these to be the primary that'll be connected up to my router, my firewall. And then we'll uh, try to pair them together and then we'll see what happens. I'm going to get my laptop so we can capture what's on the screen as I do this and we'll see what happens. Okay. Okay. I have the two Wavelink mesh routers here on the table. They already are plugged in with their power supplies, but they're not turned on yet. So I'm going to push this one this out of the way because that's going to be the secondary mesh. This one is going to be both the primary mesh and the connection to the internet. So I'm going to go ahead and connect up my RJ45 directly to the internet, or at least the internet router, my router. And then I have a laptop over here that I'm going to plug in to, let's pick one of these ports. Okay. Here's the laptop right here, and I'm capturing it on the screen. You'll be seeing it appearing on the screen to capture uh, as needed as I start showing some of the menus. So let's go ahead now and power this on and see what happens. The power on switch is right here. Okay. Oh, I see lights coming on. Each of the three ports has a green light. The one to the internet, the one that's empty, and the one that's connected up. So I guess it's booting up at this point. We'll wait a few minutes and then I'll see if the laptop recognizes it. We got Wavelink at the top here, and now the green lights are starting to blink. Okay, so it looks like it might be communicating. Nice purple little Wavelink. Let me go ahead and do the tear as long as I'm at it over here. I'll tear that one off so we can try to touch mode later on. Let me go to the laptop. Let me run an internet browser. And it seems to be going to the internet, which I guess it's going through here at this point. My wireless is not up on the laptop so it's obviously using that network connection yep it shows up as on on my laptop as well on the ethernet port okay according to the manual i should go to a specific address since we're in a specific address range now we're gonna have to go to the router that's connected to that same range so that is 
1.168.20.1. Hit enter. Hey, there we are. We're into the actual menuing screen per the manual. The next thing we need to do is the WAN mode. So we gotta, okay, let's go into here. See what we get, should be a menu here. It's detecting the internet and it sees that we have DHCP and auto mesh. Let's go ahead and accept that. Now it has the Wi-Fi settings. It's its country or origin. It gives all the setup device parameters to it. Mac address, uptime, 18 minutes now. Firmware version, et cetera, et cetera. The network, my router address that was given to it. It's gateway, other configuration parameters at this point. Let me check my phone and see if it recognizes the wireless. We'll go in, go to config, wired, and there we go. It does see it. So we can see that the uh, wavelink dash mesh underscore seven F nine zero is present. So I could connect to that if I wanted to with my phone. So at this point, I want to get the second device set up, which I have sitting back here right now. So I'm going to move this one over to the right and I'm going to get this one over here. I'll put it down for a minute. Let me do the tear on it. Let me put it down. Now we want to do it so that it pairs mesh wise. So I shouldn't have to connect any cables, but if it was to fail and I couldn't connect it, then I could connect the WAN cable over to the other LAN port on the primary, and they should be able to connect up and mesh out that way. But I'm gonna go ahead and do it wirelessly first. So if I come in here and I say mesh devices, it sees the router and it sees one extender. So let me um, see if I can connect up to that. Mesh devices. Oh, I forgot to turn this one on. Let me do that first, okay? <laughs> that was not powered on. Lights are coming on. The top is lit and the top is a purple, whereas the other one that's now up and live, it's a blue. That's interesting. So with that, let me see when it comes live. Let's see if I can actually connect to it. Okay, we got one blinking and one solid blue. I think I have to hit add. Please confirm the main router has successfully connected to the internet. Yes. Place the new mesh device you want near the router. Hit next. Let's do a scan. It's scanning for, I guess, another router. We found something here. Let me select that and add it. We are adding the second one. Okay, so we got one still solid and one blinking. It takes about two minutes according to this to connect to the mesh. Looks like the blinking red now. Now it's blinking slower. Red. It says press and hold the pair buttons on both of them. Let me do that. They're blinking blue now. One solid, one's blinking. Okay. I did a refresh and it now says it's good signal strength. Okay. They're now solid blue, which means they're connected into the mesh. Now, one last thing I want to try is uh, what happens if I connect my laptop to one of these other LAN ports on the meshed satellite. So I'm going to disconnect it. Let me get out of this first and I'm going to unplug it. Let's see what happens if I connect it over here. Well, it's lighting up. Got a green light. We're connected to the local area network. It's not wireless. So what happens if I um, go to YouTube? Let's see what we got. And it comes up. So right now I am connected hardwired to the first mesh unit. As you can see here, it's connected. It's communicating and I see the same type of activity going on on the laptop as well. And uh, it's going meshed over to the first device and then it's going up to the internet from there. So it seems like it works great, okay? In terms of these mesh devices. Now, I don't know if I can test it. I'm not gonna do it in this video, I can test it from any distant perspective and see what happens. But um, I will connect wirelessly, make this mesh my, um, my phone's mesh or wireless connection that is. So I'm gonna see it, it shows up. The Wavelink mesh underscore seven F90. I'm going to click on that. 
It's asking for my password. As you can see here, it's asking for the password. Let me type that password in, seeing if it can join. And we are connected. We're actually connected to the Wavelink on my phone right now. Okay. Let me see if I can uh, do some browsing. Definitely is connected to the wireless. Let me uh, go in and look something up on the internet. Okay, it seems to be working fine. There I am still connected and I did some browsing and everything looks good. Okay. So with that, that's as far as I'm going to go in this video. If it comes up with something interesting going forward in terms of this equipment, I might consider doing additional stuff on a different video though, and we'll take it from there. Otherwise, these things seem to work fine. And uh, I'll move on to, uh, to say take care and thanks for watching.